Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host, Brian. Today we are checking out a heavily requested band called Spawn of Possession. They've been requested by several people. I've tried to fit in everybody who's requested them into this little thing right here. We got uh, Maricha245, Kerosene1, Connor Rodenfels, uh, Sock. Sorry. Uh, Saku, Bagas, Hendra, David Schneider, Blazer13, John Heyman, Paradox, Timeline, Caleb, Richie, and there is a strong, uh, strong pattern between them to react to a track called Apparition. So, of course, that's what we're doing today. Lots of people have asked for this. This is obviously something I probably should have done a while ago. But let's let's get into this. Let's let's see why this is so heavily requested. And let's go. All right, we got a bit of an orchestral beginning to this. Very baroque sounding. Late Baroque. More of the thematic elements of Baroque, though. We're not really seeing a lot of the compositional elements, but they're definitely evoking that time period. Lots of really interesting musical techniques going on here with the muting uh, to create these really short staccato notes in those runs. Really digging the mix between the uh, the orchestral stuff with the metal. Great use of the stereo with the guitars. Layered screams there. I love this riff. I love this riff so much. A little bit of a time field shift there. Nice little orchestral strings that are resonating through the guitars as well. Half time feel. Yet, 
Good counterpoint going on here between the two guitars. We got one guitar over here laying down like a bass line, not a bass line, but like a foundation. And a guitar playing lead over here. The orchestra does a really good job of filling the space, kind of make the sound uh, quite a bit wider. Do they have multiple singers, or is that one guy doing both types of screams? Crazy double bass right there. A lot of tension building up right here. We have a lot of energy going, but not really any movement. It's just. It's really interesting to hear both the rhythm guitar and the orchestra kind of lay down the chords. A lot of synergy going on between those two instruments. Interesting synergy between the vocalist and the drums here. Really nice. Bass turn it up a little bit, giving a little bit of the spotlight. Yeah. Interesting shift there. Got some shred going on. The whole band's just erupted right here. I found a way to work a xylophone into this whole thing, and I gotta give him props for that. That was, uh, that was interesting. Yeah, so, Spawn of, uh, yeah, Spawn of Possession. That was a delight, musically. Uh, I'm sure most of you know that uh, the 
real harsh vocals there, not necessarily up my alley, but I I appreciate what they brought to the table, how they were added to the band. Um, I'm not really going to talk about it much though, because I think the real focus for me was the music, and this song has so much to talk about there. Um, first of all, it comes in with this straight up baroque church music sounding orchestra uh and just uh you know setting the tone there for the entire song all right the the themes the the melodic themes the um uh, emotions the kind of eeriness to it all it's all right there in the first 30 seconds and it permeates throughout the rest of the track. So that is a perfect thesis statement to this track. It just sets up all the expectations. As soon as you hear that part, you know exactly what you're in for. And then, usually, um, once the band comes in, it kind of, uh, most bands, if they choose to have an orchestral or a string-based in uh, intro, it is just that intro. Um, I really loved how they took that idea that they used in the the intro to the song with the uh, the Baroque style uh, symphony orchestra, whatever you want to call it, and uh, they used that as a basis for the entire song. That part permeated throughout everything. It was it was there in the background of almost every section. And it continued to lend its unique textures and ideas to the song. And never relented. Um, but the cool thing is they didn't even just use the instruments. They used a lot of the ideas and chord progressions and note choices from that section throughout the other instruments as well. There was a lot of that type of uh, composition inside of the guitars. So, I mean, it was, this is, I mentioned uh, a while ago when I did a, uh, not really a reaction, but I, I presented um, the Human Abstract's Faust, and I said that it was the perfect marrying of classical and metal. And because it used a lot of classical composition techniques in metal rather than just classical sounds in metal. And I, up until today, I had only I had only ever heard it from the Human Abstract. Uh, I always just kind of assumed that that was a unique aspect of theirs. They have a their lead songwriter has a master's degree in uh, guitar, and I believe he minored in uh, classical composition. So I mean, it's just in his his mind uh, that writing classically is what he does. You know, playing classical guitar is what he does. Uh, so that gets uh, transferred into his metal writing as well. But it's it's not obviously unique to them. I mean, I, I have a limited uh, library, a limited uh, exposure to metal. So that's one of the cool things I, I like about doing this channel, is that I get introduced to stuff like this, uh, Spawn of Possession, that lets me know, uh, you know, the things that I've heard is just such a small part of the metal scene, and what I think is unique to a band isn't actually unique to a band. And, and you know, applying classical composition to metal music is not necessarily something that anybody can claim to be unique. It is something anybody could do if you have the knowledge for Um but I, you know, I've just never heard it before. So it's really amazing to see that kind of stuff applied to spawn of, in Spawn of Possession in a completely different way than what's done in Human Abstract. Um, these guys went for a, a completely different tone, a completely different style of metal. Uh, but you can still hear a lot of the same ideas permeating through, where they take a, a lot of classical compositional ideas and apply it to a very modern style of music. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's just. I, re I really wish they had at least some cleans in here. I understand that it's it's death metal. Uh, you know, cleans don't go with the genre, I'm going to assume. But I, that, would, that would push this band from like an 8 out of 10 to a 10 out of 10 to me. Uh, all the music is there. It's just for me to be able to listen to it on a daily basis 
Uh, it would it would have to have a few more cleans in it. Um, I really like their clean sections though. Uh, I think they do a really good job transitioning into those. They found a way to work in a xylophone. I think it was a xylophone. It had more of a metallic than a, a wooden um, texture to it. So I'm pretty sure it was more in the lines of being a bell or a xylophone rather than something like a marimba. But, uh, I mean, they put it into a death metal song. I don't know anybody else who could have done that. Um, it's just not an instrument you tend to hear in even rock in general. The entire idea of rock, you just don't hear that kind of uh, instrument. It's very bright and cheerful, usually associated with holidays. Um, it's, it's just not something. It, I just, I love that I picked it up. It was, it was a little buried in the mix, but I'm glad I picked it up there at the end. Um, speaking of the end, the bassist was given, uh, a few bars, eight, 16, probably about eight, <clears throat> depending on what tempo they were writing it in, to kind of lay out this bass solo, and it was glorious. Like, it starts off, uh, just like a, a pretty typical bass line, uh, I was like, yeah, he's, you know, getting some spotlight, playing some eighth notes, and running up and down the, the neck of the bass, I'm like, oh yeah, this is good, but then he just starts busting out this little funky groove, and... It's, uh, it was good. It's kind of weird saying funky groove inside of, uh, Death Metal because none of the rest of the song really had, like, a funk edge to it, but, um, yeah, that bass line was killer, though. Uh, yeah. A lot of, I don't know if there was a lot of, um, melodic counterpoint going on, which is something that I would like to see more of, given their Baroque inspiration for this, for the song, at least. I don't know if it's typical for them as a whole, but this song definitely had a lot of Baroque inspiration. Uh, there is a lot of rhythmic um, counterpoint going on, though, where we would have two, sometimes three tracks kind of all playing lead. Some were definitely more lead-ish than others. Um, I felt like the lead guitar had uh, he was playing fast notes a lot, and he kind of, to me, had the spotlight in a lot of the sections. But there's also a second guitar that was playing not chords, but kind of laying down a foundation, some eighth, some six, or some quarter and eighth notes, a little slower of a of a melody or of a rhythm, but still melodic. You know, still playing a a sentence rather than um, you know chord progression. Uh, and then you had your lead, your lead singer, your growler, um, not necessarily playing notes, but definitely s taking a little bit of the spotlight just by proxy of having words, but also just because uh, the speed of the of his rhythms uh, just kind of uh, it, it begs for attention. I, some of the stuff he was doing was just crazy even if i i didn't like the, the way it was delivered the texture of of his vocal style um you know it was just done very well speaking of the speed of the singer there was a bit at the end where the drums were doing blast beats on the snare i believe and the singer was basically rapping in the same rhythm as the snare on the drums were and it was this weird uh merging of vocals and drums that I've never really heard before. Really cool to see that kind of synergy. Usually uh, the vocalist synergizes with the other melodic instruments, the ones that can sing musical or play musical phrases and then they can line up with the singer. Uh, it's really interesting to see the, the singer decide to line up with the drums, which obviously has to be done rhythmically. The drums has a very limited note set, um, unless it has some sort of wood blocks or something that it can put in there for, for notes. Um, but usually you have your snare, which I, snares are tuned to a note. Um, to me, it's more of a, a, a percussive hit though, but toms, I can hear the notes in toms and usually you got two or three toms. So, um, you have three to four notes that you can really reliably hit on a drum. It's not really something you can have a singer sing around, but to match the rhythm, that was pretty cool. Uh, yeah, overall, though, I, I, this was a treat. This was a, something I was not expecting, especially after yesterday's song. Um, I was kind of expecting just more 
harshness all around. And even though this had the harsh vocals, it had blast beats, uh, shred, it was a faster song. I feel like a lot of the Baroque inspirations came through though, and it ended up being a lot more melodic, even though it was in a harsh tone, it didn't come off as harsh because of its classical roots. So yeah, I, I dig it. I, like I said, I don't know if it's something I, I would definitely have to be in the mood for it. Uh, primarily because of the vocals. But uh, I am definitely impressed. I'm glad you guys recommended me this. Uh, if the rest of the stuff this week is close to this, I'm, I'm a happy camper. I'm not expecting it to. I, I'm kind of thinking this is a one-off and that the genre is going to be more like yesterday's. But uh, yeah, this was good stuff. Let me know what you guys thought. Obviously, we had a lot of requests for this one. Uh, I'm sure there are some other tracks you guys want me to react to. If you haven't heard of him before, though, what did you think? I mean, this was a pretty cool marriage between uh, two kind of different uh, genres of music. So what did you guys think? Was that a good marriage? You know, did you not like it? Uh, you know, is it was it too rough for you? Like, I mean, it was a it was a, it was a rough song. Uh, well, not rough song. Uh, uh, harsh a harsh song so uh maybe it was too harsh for you as well let me know down in the comments and while you're down there make sure you like subscribe and ring the bell i'll be back tomorrow with another song in the tech or death metal genre until then you guys have a fantastic day stay safe out there